Now, users, groups and roles. So what are users, groups and roles? So there are several roles like anonymous role, authenticated role, role mapping, role category. Okay, these roles are assigned to individual users or groups of users. There is also anonymous role, okay, though it, uh, it, it looks like, you know, but still anonymous role is given for the user who is not known, means for a user who is not grouped under any category. So that, for those users, we keep anonymous role. Okay. OPSs delegate authentication to Oracle WebLogic Server Authenticator providers managed with WebLogic administration control. So these roles and authentication and authorization will depend upon what provider you have integrated with your WebLogic console as I told you just now. So depending upon an authenticator, your authentication techniques or ways will be defined. Next, user, end user is nothing but a user, enterprise user, okay. It is the user's information is stored in the identity store, as I said. It can be OID, it can be your database repository also, or it can be your AD. Right now we will keep AD aloof, okay. We will just concentrate on our WebLogic security point. An authenticated user is a user whose credentials have been validated and anonymous user is a user who have not been validated. Okay, it, You can also call him as an unauthenticated. It's, that is permitted access to only unprotected resources. Now resources. Resources are nothing but URLs. Let's say I have two applications built in my um, middleware stack. One is slash ABC and another is slash XYZ. So I am protecting my slash ABC URL which leads to application website that will become a protected resource and slash XYZ will become an unprotected resource. Out of 500 users in my organization, 300 are authorized to access slash ABC. So another 200 will be called as an anonymous user. So if they are trying to access my system, they will not be able to access my slash ABC, but yes, they will have access to slash XYZ because even these are unprotected and the, the users are also, you know, also falls under anonymous category. The user which is not known to my system, that's nothing but anonymous use. But uh, why do we need that? There are uh, users, like in an organization, there are a lot of departments. Okay. So there are few departments which has nothing to do with this. Let's say if there is a, uh, let's say travel agent, okay. So mm -hmm. third party people you uh, ask your, no, to sit in your organization and work for them. Contract based people, okay. So there are different, different roles of which some people who are not your organization but temporarily into your organization. So you don't want them to access uh, your internal system. So for those users, you will not give any kind of access. Okay. Let's say there is an organization who has given some kind of product to some vendor. So the vendor people will come and sit in those organizations because they are serving the organization, but they are not a part of that organization. Mm -hmm. So that's why mm -hmm. they will not have access to their internal portals or systems kind of. So if they try to access, maybe they will get some message. If, if, if uh, the portal is that smart, it will set some message to that user that you are not authorized, sorry, you are not authorized to use that. Instead, if you are looking for this, instead you can look at these disks. Some vague information, maybe they will be able to see, but not the crucial one. That's why anonymous user. Okay. Okay. Now roles. Enterprise role, enterprise group is one and the same. Okay, collection of users and collection of other groups. It can be hierarchical that it is a group can include arbitrarily nested groups. So one group can be a collection of another groups and another groups can be a collection of 
few more groups. Okay. So that can compromise and say it is a one role, enterprise role. Okay. Mm -hmm. Java enterprise logical role is a role specified declaratively or programmatically by a Java application. So if you define a role in your deployment descriptor, so that will technically be called as a Java logical role. Okay, using your application code. So even developers make some kind some uh, roles through their JDEV through the code. So that those are called as Java logical roles. Okay. They can be mapped to only enterprise groups or users. It cannot be mapped directly to application roles. So application role is nothing but a collection of users, groups and other application roles. Okay. Can be mapped many to many external roles. Okay. So your Java logical role can be mapped only to enterprise users or a concrete group of users but not to application role. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are the terminologies which you need to know while you, you uh, try to set your security constraints in your system. Okay. Yes. So again, uh, mm -hmm. what is the difference in application role and enterprise role? Enterprise role will be a group of users, that's it. An application role will be groups of employees, you know, which are which have which which are stored in your credentials, credential store. Okay, not just okay. end users. Okay. 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 So um, mm -hmm. enterprise role is a group of people. So mm. suppose developers there is a group developers. So who all are belong to developers is a it's like an enterprise group. Yes. Okay, and then what is application role? It's collection of user and everything, user groups and other roles. I, I, I still did not get the application role. Okay, wait, we have few more. Uh, we'll see when we'll set this, you'll understand. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Principle is the identity to which the authorization in the policy is granted. Okay, someone to which you grant a policy, policy principle. Okay, that someone can be a user, that can be application rule also. Okay. okay. So, so principle meaning, principle is an entity to which something has been granted, some policy has been granted. Okay. And now there are two types of policies, application policy and system policy. Application policy is a functional policy that specifies set of permissions allowed to perform within the application. Okay, which we are talking that the user should be able to see this, see that. Okay, so that becomes your application policy. 